coming to the grocery store over the weekend. And before I left, she rhymed off six things. Olives, oranges, sliced bread, granola bars, dinner rolls, and apples. Simple enough. And I wish that I could say that I proudly brought everything back. But I didn't. I forgot the sliced bread. Now I think I did what everyone does before they leave the house with a list of groceries. You go and you put your shoes on, you walk out the door and you forget the list on your <laughs> stairs. You know, and by the time you realize that you've forgotten the list, you're halfway to the grocery store and you're not going to turn around. So you start rhyming off everything that you believe was on the list. There were six items, first time you say five, the next time you say five and forget another object, and then finally you say, you know what, I'm just going to go. I'm going to remember anything. It's going to be fun. Well, you know, I asked myself when I came back how I can avoid doing this again. And doing a little bit of research, I realized that Toastmasters and welcome guests, remembering a list is actually not as simple as we think it is. Our minds have evolved to categorize and code what we hear, what we feel, what we see around us. But for some reason, we're not very good at memorizing written texts. It's, remembering a grocery list is not as plausible as you might think. Now instead, our brains actually work best when we connect various ideas with one another. So actually forming a web of thoughts in our mind. Now mnemonics works well with three main principles. So one is imagination, the second association, and the third is location. I tried to think of an acronym to make it easy to remember, but it spells IL, which means absolutely nothing. So you're actually going to have to remember what to remember so you can remember. <laughs> now, imagination and location are actually fairly straightforward. Imagination are the scenarios that you conceive, while location is where you house that scenario to give it context. Association is the link between the various thoughts, and it's here you can actually have a lot of fun. So some of the various techniques you can use for association are making the event or making the thought or the object personal to you. Let's take the slice of bread, for example. It was only when I got home with groceries in hand, looked at my mom in the face, that I realized, you know, it was her who had given me the list with the bread on it, and I knew that it was going to affect me personally because she was going to be mad. And maybe send me up to the store again, which I just really did not want to do. So that's an example of how it can be personal to you. Another way you can associate various things is to group them. So I could have gone into the grocery store thinking that I had to buy produce that I have to buy in things from the bakery section or from the dairy section. I could have also gone in and thought, okay, well, I have to buy objects for lunch, dinner, or snacks. So grouping it is another way to associate your various objects. But the one that I'm going to talk to you guys today is the journey method. And this is a tactic that I think will be very useful for all of us in the future when that grocery list is back on the stoop at home. Or when you have a list of groceries that you're making at work and you don't have a pen and paper that you want to take with you, this is a great method for you to use. This is especially great for more arbitrary objects that don't necessarily connect very naturally to one another. So we're going to take my grocery list and I'm going to weave it into a story. And then I'm going to play quiz master and you guys are going to have to tell me what my list was. <laughs> now, imagination is going to come through the scenario. I'm going to house it in the context of the grocery store, so that's location, and you'll see how they all connect through my story. Now, I want you guys to close your eyes. I know everyone gets nervous when you close your eyes, but close it. Everyone's closing their eyes, and I'm going to tell you my story, so picture it. 
I was walking to the grocery store the other day when I tripped over all that's rolling my way down the sidewalk. Now, I will be honest and admit it was likely because I was paying attention to the gorgeous buttocks of the man across the street. They looked like nice, ripe oranges. <laughs> well, anyways, I picked myself up and I uh, walked to the front of the store. There are two large pieces of bread swung open, automatically letting me in. <laughs> I went and I grabbed the basket, and it was funny because I looked down and it was squishy, and I realized that the handlebar was actually made from granola. Anyways, I walked through the store, and as I entered the produce section, I noticed that I wasn't the only one checking people out that day. The clerk was actually checking out the woman he was helping, looking at her well-endowed dinner rolls. <laughs> I was absolutely hilarious, and uh, I was actually soon distracted as I walked to the cash only to smell that gorgeous apple pie in the grocery section. And that's it, you can open your eyes. So, as I was walking to the store, what was it that I tripped over? Olives. And what was I focused on? Orange. <laughs> 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 when I picked myself up and I made my way to the store, how did I get in? <laughs> and my basket had. <laughs> And then finally, when I gave my way to the uh, cash, uh, apple pie. Apple pie. <laughs> now, it's interesting because I started off my speech by giving you guys my list, and now you're reciting it to me. So I do think that it's a fairly uh, useful technique and one that will stick with you. And the nice thing is about it is that you can relate it to yourself or you can create an arbitrary situation. So really have fun with it. And the next time that your significant other goes to the grocery store, comes back without the bread, and look at them, roll your eyes, and say, oh my gosh, all I did was give you a simple list. <laughs>